second question after size that I'd suggest uh, considering is exactly what quality or price range you think you might want to be in. You can get a five foot piano that costs $5,000 or $100,000. So kind of figuring out where you think you should be or, or uh, what level of investment is appropriate for you, uh, I would say is the next most important thing. Uh, and when we talk about quality, like why is you know this piano one price? Why are those pianos over there another price? What makes any of these instruments so much different than one another that the price point would be that uh, wide? Well, I'm just gonna walk over here and talk a little bit about why those price ranges are as wide as they are. Now, these are two displays from Bechstein and you will see that I reference some brands. This is not to say that these are the brands that you should be buying. They happen to be the brands that we uh, carry here at the store. Uh, but there's several more that I will be uh, suggesting and, and that we might be referencing. Um, but if you're wondering why you're seeing these particular brands, well, we are a piano store and these are the ones that we happen to sell. So these two diagrams that we're looking at are really good examples of what two different quality ranges will give you when you're kind of under the hood of the piano because when you're looking at them from the exterior, they kind of do look the same. You've got this black or often black shiny exterior and they all have steel plates and they all have the copper strings and they kind of look the same and you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe the only difference in price really is brand. Maybe the brand is what's creating this, uh, this extra layer of cost. Well, in pianos, maybe more than any other high-end good, uh, for for the most part, for the large part of the industry, you're getting what you pay for. If you're spending $100,000 on a piano, there's a very good chance it's not just the brand you're paying for, it's because that instrument has uh, you know, two or three times more cost involved in the instrument, uh, the cost of the materials is there, the cost of the labor is a whole lot higher. Uh, the piano industry is not an industry where a lot of people are getting super rich and super wealthy, and the margins are actually fairly tight. So when you have a price point that's getting up into the six digits, it usually means that you're, as I said, getting what you pay for. Um, I'm not going to uh, drill too much into the weeds here, but I'm gonna give you an example of why two different price ranges might result in two different uh, you know, quality levels. So on the left, we have a diagram of what approximately a 50,000 US dollar uh, grand piano would get you in terms of certain components, and I'll point those out. And on the right, we've got an instrument that is basically twice the price. So they're both from Bechstein, they're both made in Germany, so why would one piano be $100,000 US? Why would another piano be $50,000 US? And by looking at these two, you start to understand why really the entire industry has these types of price differentials. Uh, grand pianos can be broken down into about four different components. You've got action, you've got the rim, you've got uh, the soundboard, and then you've got sort of this, the uh, scaling uh, and the harmonic components. Um, and when you start to take a peek at the differences of that, you realize what a massive difference in production time and just the tolerances and the quality of materials can exist. Let's take a look first at the rim. So here's an example of a $50,000 piano, and we have the outer rim and the inner rim. Um, I should point out that most pianos all have an outer or an inner rim with a couple of exceptions. Steinway is well known for having their continuously bent rim, meaning the outer and the inner rim are actually formed at the same time. Um, there is some debate as to whether that actually results in any sort of a musical advantage. Um, however, it is something that they have done right from the beginning of their uh, time in the industry and they use hard rock maple for that. So uh, certainly just the longevity of, of the design and the success of the design you know, speaks to that. However, um, most pianos have an outer and an inner, inner rim. And with the lower uh, cost Bechstein, you can see that there are far more laminations and that those laminations have more imperfections and it's a lower quality of hardwood uh, that's going into those laminations. So you're taking a lower grade wood and you're essentially substituting the quality of the wood for uh, you know, a laminating process uh, that kind of compensates for that. So you probably have uh, 30 or 40 laminations through here, uh, which means more glue, 
Uh, it may mean uh, more stability in the structure. However, that rim is going to produce less of a tonal effect, less of a, um, a you know, a speaking effect than a rim that has higher quality uh, fiber, less wood, and is just able to resonate more. So we've seen that. Now if we go over here and take a look at what a $100,000 rim looks like, you can see there's actually quite a big difference. Far fewer laminations, a greater variety of hardwoods that have been selected there with all sorts of different pore lengths so that different frequencies can respond. Uh, and of course, uh, the tolerances by which those laminations uh, are, are created and sanded and manufactured are extremely high. There's just literally not a thousandth of an inch gap in between any one of those laminations. And so as you go uh, down from this type of a concept all the way down to say a five or a $10,000 piano, you basically continue to get a cheapening of the materials, a thinning of the rim, and more glue and more uh, laminating uh, taking the place of thicker laminations, higher quality wood, where the wood itself can do uh, quite a bit of the tonal generation of the piano. Um, so there's just one example uh, in a piano where a very different design, a different use of material, and a different set of tolerances actually produce both a, a, a different musical effect as well as uh, quite a desperate um, pricing effect as well. And you see that as you go all the way through the piano. You get the same type of effect when you get to a soundboard, where a soundboard uh, that uses a slow growth spruce versus one that's grown at lower altitudes and has thicker rings um, makes quite a big difference in terms of the responsiveness of the soundboard. Um, you get a big difference when the soundboard is tapered, such as you see here. It sort of becomes uh, narrower when you get to the outside and thicker when it's on the inside versus this one uh, which is actually a uniform thickness all the way through so that's a, another difference that you see on instruments as you go from a lower price point to a higher price point you see differences in how well the overall frame of the instrument is integrated um, and cohesive so that energy uh, that's received at any one point of the rim is able to be reflected through the entire structure. Uh, you see steel plating often in higher quality instruments versus ones where it's basically left up uh, to the carpentry to ensure that you get all of that reflection and all of that uh, connectiveness. So these are the questions that may help you to determine what price range you wanna be in. Because all of this results in clarity and consistency of tone. Um, action is another really, really big one, which has more to do with the feel of the piano than it does the sound of the piano. But those two things together are going to produce either the $10,000 piano or the $100,000 piano. So if you are new to piano, and this is something that is, you're just really passionate, really excited about, and you think that having a beautiful instrument in your home is going to inspire you to sit there and want to make music, uh, and you don't really have too many reference points, um, and you're not, uh, say, a, you know, an avid audiophile, a $10,000 piano may totally satisfy that need for you. If you've already got some experience with instruments, and you're moving from an upright to a grand, uh, or your ear is developed, and the $10,000 piano is going to have too many inconsistencies in the tone, or it's not going to have the resonance out of the body uh, that's going to cause you to want to sit there and be, uh, you know, moved to to play for hours, then maybe twenty or thirty thousand dollars is what you are going to want to invest in to get an instrument that's, you know, very consistent. Um, and uh, is, your, you know, your ears aren't going to be picking up on imperfections. Um, clear of the $30,000 mark is where you might get somebody who's truly uh, either a higher level player or uh, you know, a passionate audiophile who isn't just looking for a lack of uh, imperfections, which is what you kind of get when you get up to around the $30,000 range. But beyond that, then it starts to become more of a connoisseur's uh, art. You know, the difference between buying a bottle of wine for under 20 bucks versus spending $200 on a bottle of wine. It really becomes how focused towards a very specific tone and a very specific touch uh, do you want to get. Um, so 
Price is the second question that I would say you really, really want to make sure that you can uh, spend some time thinking about. This is where getting into showrooms and sitting down and playing a number of price points without being you know, too scared that you're going to fall in love with something. Uh, but that'll help you educate yourself in terms of what your ear uh, really needs. As my advice to every customer is always, if you can hear the difference, it may be worth it for you. If you can't hear the difference, there's a good chance it's not a good investment for you. Uh, and I think that holds true for many, many people who are shopping for this. If you can discern it uh, and you can afford it, then it may be a really good spend. And if not, uh, just find that point where you're not able to discern anymore. Uh, and there's a good chance that that's probably where um, you know, a logical spend for you would be.